sweats popping real fucking gamers welcome to the 20 motherfucking sixth iteration of the nifty paul nifty pauldron nifty cauldron podcast wow i just did a spoonerism if you don't know what that is look it up motherfucker spoonerism uh, i am one of your esteemed co-hosts and this is my other esteemed co-host my name is kelly by the way but this is my other esteemed <laughs> co-host wow i'm bad mom by the way fuck me uninstall it's been a while and uh i need to uninstall life you can tell it's been a while eh uh yeah it's been a while i haven't had my pee pee touched in a in many a year so uh yeah um welcome back to the podcast it's been a fucking while uh we are gonna tell you why for one of these fucking reasons spit it a lot oh well i mean before i tell you why if you've missed us hit that like button maybe maybe leave a comment about how much you missed us like this much or that much I guess while you're down there, if you're not subscribed yet, hit the thing, do it, do it. But yeah, um, it's my fault that we haven't been here. <laughs> Let's be entirely real. Um, a little bit, a little bit your fault indirectly. Uh, so I lost my voice for like two weeks. So we we couldn't record. Oh yeah. And um, I would say like we're gonna insert an audio clip of of you know me trying to talk but i sound horrible and i don't want the world to know so we're not gonna do any of that it doesn't even exist it's just you going it's just you going like <laughs> <laughs> yeah for a minute it was it was really bad for one minute yeah it was, it was really really bad luckily it's back now you know knock on wood and uh, and when i say like a little bit your fault is because like your job kind of fucked you last weekend and yeah at first you have to work <laughs> we need our saturday yeah at first i was like the audacity of this bitch and then i was like oh wait no like last weekend was legitimately my fault because i had you know a 13 hour work day <laughs> so yeah so like indirectly it's like how dare you work 13 hours and then not make time to record that like, no like it's fine like we already canceled because of me what's mo what's one more week you know well, we could have done what we did last year in September when we had this training where we were just recorded like um, on a Tuesday, but your voice wasn't back yet. So yeah, by that time, so it just didn't happen. Sorry, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so yeah, the fucking. To be honest, let's just fucking jump right the fuck in. Uh, we're gonna talk about some hot fucking sexy ass motherfucking monster hunter rise because that is on the tip of our tongues it's in the seat of our pants it's in the erection in our fucking jeans <laughs> sure i mean uh disclaimer time of recording uh monster hunter came out yesterday yesterday and we haven't had any or very little time to play it so we can't really give our thoughts to the game quite yet uh we'll, we'll definitely do a podcast about that soon but uh we still have thoughts and feelings about Monster Hunter. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you want to go first? Should I go first? Um, I mean, I think I think you should go first because you've had more playtime technically. Because I haven't been able to play the game at all, and there's a whole McFucking story behind that shit. Yeah, and there's a whole McFucking story behind your shit too. So, um, I think you should start off, Scoop. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, let's let's start with the story first. Um, this story goes back couple weeks if i want to lay down the proper foundation first so i pre-ordered the game through nintendo and uh just a digital copy because like i want that shit on midnight uh the demo release was very poorly handled so i just want to be able to play and stream it when it comes out and then maybe maybe i just didn't see it or uh it's just not there i didn't go back to check it didn't tell me when i was supposed to pay for it so I just assumed as long as I pay for the game comes out, it's not a problem. Uh, the game comes out the 26th. I get paid like 25th. It's fine. Don't have to worry about it. And then I'm streaming and I get an email by Nintendo on the 20th. Like, hey, we tried to charge you for the game, but you didn't have the money. So uh, fuck you, pre-order canceled. Like, really? I don't even get a, get a second chance here, Nintendo? Just canceled outright? Like, all right then. And um, then... You know, I just mentioned on stream how, how that was like kind of weird, how you're handling that. And then you and Solstice banded together and got me the game. Great. Problem solved. Don't even have to worry about it. That's some extra money that I can then now spend on something else. Thank you again, by the way. Fast forward <laughs> to, um, to, I guess, a little bit before release, because it was kind of like a question of when it was going to arrive. Amazon shipping details don't say the 26th. 
they say that it's arriving like the 28th, 29th. I'm like, surely that has to be a mistake. It's just probably because it's a pre-order and it'll, it'll, it'll ship on time. Wrong. That did not ship on time. Um, release day happens. I don't have the game yet. It says it's arriving on Tuesday and the game came out on Friday. So it's like, oof, that sucks. But it is what it is. You know, I'm still getting the game for free. So I'm a little bit impatient. It kind of sucks, but it's still getting here. Then yesterday, on Friday, I go live and I, um, I was just talking about Monster Hunter in general and how it's an insane situation. And I decided to check like the Amazon listing and it, and it dead ass just says sold out, like out of stock. Like, wait, hold on. Does, does this include my copy? Like, wait a minute. Can we, can we, can we back up here, Amazon? Can we get some clarification? But obviously you can't. And then I was like, you know what? What happens if you cancel? Like if you cancel, do you just get your money back? Can we just get me like a gift card? To, to just get me the digital copy and I can play right away and it's problem solved. We don't, you know, we don't have to do this. And we did that, sort of. We, we, we did do it, but it was a quite uh, a bigger deal than at least I expected. So what happened was Solstice canceled. He got his money back. I thought that's all fine and good. And then I was like, okay, well, here you go. Like, here's some Dutch websites with, with gift cards. And uh, Paul's helping him out like behind the scenes, so like I, I could just keep streaming, and he, and he was just gonna do it with him. And if there if he had like any language questions, he could just talk to him. And I and I guess there were like some payment issues. Uh, I don't know if it like could tell that he was not uh, from the from the EU and that it was giving him trouble, um, or that we just didn't have any of the payment options that he uses. Maybe either or or both. And then. Then the fucking relay race had to kick in because then Paul offered like, hey, what if I just get you the game and like he can he can send me the money. But because we don't have Venmo in Europe, like the only real way to send money between the US and Europe is either PayPal or a direct bank uh, transfer. So what ended up happening is he had to Venmo you the money but you could PayPal it to Paul so Paul could buy me the game. And it's like, this is a fucking relay race of money transferring hands. Um, and it was a whole mess. In hindsight, it's hilarious. Like, I, I think just the situation is just so comical and so out there. Like, what the fuck, right? Yeah, it was it was basically fucking deep lore. And there was no reason why we, ha why, I don't know. It's like, why, why is it Nintendo make it that fucking difficult to get money? Also... Not only that, but like Nintendo, like goddamn, they only sell that shit in fucking increments of sixty dollars, right? But then a game is sixty five, so then you have to buy. No, 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 it's 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 worse than that. So the game is sixty, mm -hmm. and they sell gift cards in, in fifteen, uh, I think twenty five and fifty. Well, I thought they had a thirty, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Who fucking cares? But 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 the the the, the scummy thing. Uh, at least over here, I don't know if, if it's like EU regulation or just how it is across the board. If I if I go and I want to buy a gift card, so let's say 60 is dividable by, by 15, I'll just get four of those. Uh, only max three per customer. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but so you have to get 50 plus 15. Yep. So you're always having a little bit of money left over, which isn't the end of the world. But like how many people have done that and then just never... Bought, like never spent that last five bucks right because they either never played their switch anymore or mm -hmm. whatever reason in, in the long run there it's, it's definitely a shitty thing which, which is why they do it it's easy money it's free money yeah because then you'll just think about you don't think about the money you just have sitting in your fucking account which is why mine is just set up to just deduct the exact amount that i fucking need from my paypal but it's just like in order to fucking do that we just so because it was like an you know like a euros to like us ratio like um you know we were already like on the us side we were already low key getting like quasi fucked right fucked yeah hell you guys always get fucked buying games for me yeah which is fine it's like not a big deal but then what ends up fucking happening is like so not only that we get fucked on the conversion but then we also got fucked because you had to buy that amount and fucking like you had to buy like the extra 15 dollars in order to fucking cover the cost so then like you get double fucked. So then I think I ended up losing like $10, which wasn't that big of a deal, especially if it means that I get to, you know, like play Monster Hunter with you. But then that didn't even happen either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and But why? Why Why didn't that happen? 
<laughs> God, okay. So we heard from a somewhat reliable internet source that they were shipping uh, Monster Hunter games like something like quasi early. Yeah. So that it would arrive by the 26th. No, 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 no. Even better than that, Amazon was shipping it out early. Like people were getting their copies like a week or two before launch because Amazon fucked up. So, I, um, hearing this from Milan, I was like, okay, well then I'll just get mine on Amazon and it'll come to the house and it won't be a big deal. Turns out that it was a fucking big deal. And what ended up happening is that so I bought the game and then Amazon basically teased, hey, it's gonna come at five fifteen. So I was like, ah, that kind of sucks, but I don't work today, so I can just do everything I need to do in the morning, and then, you know, as soon as the game comes at Monster Hunter, like, I can fucking mash on that shit before stream. I'll get at least two hours of gameplay. Then, Amazon was like, haha, it's coming at 6.15. So I was like, okay, well, that really fucking sucks. Now I only get, like, 45 minutes, but it's fine. I can just be ready and ready to go, like, for stream-wise for it. And then Amazon was just like, ha ha, now it's coming at 7.15. So then I was like, okay, well, that's when fucking stream starts. So I literally can't play this game. So now I need to like figure out what I'm going to do for stream, which I couldn't have done anyways. Initially, I had bought like a like a shadow cast, which is like a capture card, but basically a third of the price to stream Monster Hunter. But it was a Kickstarter and I still haven't fucking seen it. So I don't know when I will, motherfucker. Great. But anyways, so then. Then Amazon, when I was checking it at 7.15, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Just as long as somebody goes out and gets the fucking game, like as soon as it gets here. Then we decided to play It Takes Two. So it wasn't important anyways. And um, Milan was nice enough to just basically be like, yeah, I'll delay playing Monster Hunter so that we can play games together. Which I was like, oh, how sweet kind of thing. So <laughs> little sweet, little sweetie kins. Um, and then like the fucking... I get a notification that my package is delivered at 8.03 p.m. So, fuck Amazon. I still haven't played technically any Monster Hunter. And suck my dick, Jeff Bezos. Did he step down? Yeah, he did step down. So, whoever's there now, you also can lick my nuts. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah, basically, we, we both got fucked by Amazon in our own way. Although... Uh, you getting fucked is like partially my fault because I literally told you like, hey, it's, it's getting shipped early. Maybe if you order still, you can get it like tomorrow, like a week before, you know, it comes out and then we can just do the thing. But then I was just like, hey, hey. Yeah. And it sucks too because I literally could have went to my local GameStop where I still had technically pre-ordered Animal Crossing and I could have just like canceled that because I never picked it up. I ended up just buying it through the store because that's when we went into lockdown. And I could have just went and canceled that used the money for that and just picked up monster hunter like that very second but because i fucking had it coming on amazon i honestly just should have went just fucking bought it and just returned it on amazon yeah also this is t totally a little tangent um about the, the 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 game shop thing or gamestop have you heard the story about the guy who basically used gamestop as his bank yes it was very well known because one i used to work at gamestop so um yeah I used to work at fucking GameStop and we had people I, I heard we heard about that ancient lore story of the guy that used GameStop like as his fucking bank. And I just want to tell you, like for somebody who was working at GameStop, it super sucked because whenever you got whenever somebody canceled pre-orders on you, it dinged your sales record. So if you happen to be the person working that day and someone came in and then they decided to just be like, you know what? I'm not really fucking feeling Kirby's epic yarn anymore. I'm going to cancel. That shit fucking came out of your fucking sales record. Oh, damn. And then at the end, yeah. And then at the end of the end of the month, what they would do is that they would just, they would rank every single associate in GameStop in that district. And then whoever was the highest ranking salesperson, you got like a hundred dollar gift card or something. Hmm. And also if you were uh, after a long period of time, if you were the most underperforming salesperson, you would eventually just get fucking like they would consider fucking cutting you like get like firing you yeah it was all based on fucking game informer sales which is the stupid power up card and the fuck where you it got you got you what like five dollars off used games it was stupid it was 12.99 where it got you five dollars off fucking used games it's fucking useless but i had to pedal that shit because if people fucking didn't fucking buy that shit then i would get fucking flamed by my boss especially because i was third key so I wasn't even, I wasn't the assistant manager and I wasn't the manager, but I was the person right below that. And so if my sales weren't good, I would get fucking reprimanded. Yeah. I mean, 
that's the whole culture, right? Upsell, upsell, upsell. But yeah, and it fucking sucks. And that's why I don't work jobs that have sales because I fucking hated it. Because I was just like, look, man, like it was it was just fucking wild that I would basically have to like trick people into buying something they don't need. Like like somebody came in and they'd be like, oh well, I only play new games. I'm like, okay, but don't you want Game Informer? It's like, no, nobody fucking wants Game Informer. Yeah. Like what the fuck. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think it's even tricking people. I think it's honestly more you're guilting people into doing the thing, right? Like, it's... it's. It was bullshit. And admittedly, I was kind of decent at it because I grew up in a Chinese guilt household anyways. So it's just like, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to fucking make you and your ancestors fucking sorry for not buying Game Informer, basically. <laughs> but it sucked because I don't want to have to be that person. Yeah, no. Like, for somebody that comes in that's just like, look, I only buy new games. It's like the the power up card is useless yeah but what if one day you know yeah it's, it's, it's basically it's 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 very shitty i i really hate the upsell techniques and this you know i've I've worked in um what's, what's uh call centers uh well call center like inbound luckily but then some other like sister company or sister division needed like help like one week and that was outbound and uh let's just say i wish there was a nearby bridge at the time i really hated just cold calling people it's the worst and be like hey do you do, like do you want the thing and then just trying to get them the thing i think in this case um we were cold calling stores because they were subscribed to like some kind of like lottery ticket system and if to see if they wanted to like renew their thing and or need more more tickets i don't know i hated it um and i never wanted to do that again and you know, like, like upselling is fine to me if it's like they're already interested in a product. Yeah. Or yeah. Or if it's like natural, or like part of the conversation, like um, when I worked at the movie theater, they were like, hey, like try and upsell this candy. So like, yeah, if, if somebody's like undecisive or just being like, hey, you also want like this, 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 this piece of candy for like a dollar on top of everything. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Right. Yeah. It's like a natural. It's the same thing with like pre-orders, like selling pre-orders at GameStop was easy because you could just be like, hey, is there any games that you are looking forward to that are coming out? And then they're like, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to like the new Harvest Moon. And I'm like, oh, well, if you pre-order the new Harvest Moon, you get a free plushie. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, yeah, I'm just going to buy the game anyways. Of course, I want a free plushie. Exactly. And then that was like natural and didn't feel salesy or guilty or anything like that. But fucking selling Game Informer did. <laughs> It's not predatory when you, when you, when it makes sense like that, you know. Yeah. No, exactly. There's totally a difference between like natural sales and predatory sales. Yeah. And Game Informer felt fucking predatory, and pre-orders did not because it's like if you're looking forward to a game, like and you just want to put five dollars down on it, it just counts towards and it counts towards the cost of the game. So it's like you know the game's like sixty five, you know, and then you put five dollars down to basically reserve you a game. So that we have enough stock that comes in. And then when you go and you pick up the game, the five bucks goes towards it. So we're literally making nothing off of it. It's just, hey, we want to make sure we have the stock for the pop for the motherfucking poppin' gamers that want to buy their shit. And we want to make sure that it's there. And it made total sense. It was not predatory at all. But fucking Game Informer? Yeah. I mean, that is, like, that, that, that's how the guy just uses it as a bank, right? Like, he would just pre-order, like, five, six, or however many games. Mm -hmm. Like, hundreds of dollars worth. And just pay for all of them in full and then when he wanted his money he would just cancel his pre-order yeah <laughs> so it's just like but it's like there there's no interest fee there's no nothing there's no yeah um what do you guys call that um i don't know the, the, some kind of fee that's very exclusive to the us uh like overdraft or whatever i don't know i don't know but th there's just like overdraft is one yeah it's just like because i think at some point an employee asked him about it i was like dude where else am i gonna am i gonna get this service where i can just withdraw my money without any fees and just keep it here an indefinite amount of time. It's like, bro. I mean, it was God Gamer, but at the same time, really sucks for the employees that would have to deal with this fucking cancel transactions because it legitimately hurts you. And you get called out by your fucking, um, by your district manager. You get, you get shamed by your manager and then you get called up by your district manager if your fucking sales are shitty. And I just, I hated working at GameStop. It was so fucking awful. It was uh, actually a similar story now that I think about it. There was this uh, woman who every so often would, would take out a loan from the bank and she would give, give her expensive car as like collateral damage. And then two weeks later, she would pay it off and get her car back. And she would do that like quite regularly. And when asked about it, 
she was just like, yeah, dude, like it's it's a lot cheaper than than airport parking. Like it's a lot cheaper to store my car at the bank <laughs> than it is to like <laughs> pay you like two weeks to have it stored at the airport whenever I go on vacation. That's like Bruh. hell yeah, big brain. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> That's actually fucking... That's 4D chess, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's 4D chess calculated god gamer fucking ascended to fucking just just galaxy brain, dude. That's woke as fuck. Because mm -hmm. that's so accurate. Because, like, airport airport parking is so fucking expensive. I don't know if you've ever had to research it, but it's literally, it's literally like, like, $50 a day. 50 bucks a day or say, yeah. It's insane. Yeah, 30 to $50 a day. And... It's fucking wild. That's why it's like it's cheaper just to get a fucking Uber, like ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. But now, like certain places are like, don't let Uber in to the airports anymore. Like, if you fly into LAX, you can't get a fucking Uber. Like, you have to fucking go to a like you have to take a shuttle that goes to a different lot where an Uber can pick you up. Damn, that's fucked up. They don't do curbside anymore. That's fucked up. But yeah, but it's super fucked. Like in her case, she had like a very expensive like car. Like imagine like a Ferrari. Like you don't want to like you don't want that. Uh, to like just leave it at home, right? So. Oh yeah, no, that's how that shit gets broken into. That's actually fucking real, fucking Galaxy Brain. Yeah. So like, like I think because of like the interest rate or something, she paid like maybe like a hundred bucks for like a couple weeks of of the bank. You know, technically just holding it. I was like, yeah, super easy, dude. And like, I I, I love those kinds of stories. Uh, I didn't know for GameStop that the employees got fucked over, which kind of sucks. Oh yeah. Which kind of like no. Makes me, it doesn't make the story as great and as wholesome, but no. it, but in her case, it's like nobody's getting fucked over. Technically, the bank is even making some money, although not that not bank needs money. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just love that shit, dude. Yeah, goes to show you though, for people that don't fucking know that, like whenever you go to fucking, whenever you go to GameStop and you cancel your fucking pre orders, like don't just roll it over to like if you decide that you don't want that game, just roll it over to another game that you like. If you got to make a couple cancellations, that's fine, but like try. Try not to fucking cancel on them. Like, it really fucking sucks. Like, it's happened to me multiple times where some guy decided that he just wanted to stop playing video games. He came in with, like, right before close, too. It was so fucking shitty. He came in with, like, 50 games. And he was like, yeah, I'm done playing video games, so I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna trade in all these 50 games and then get cash. And granted, like, GameStop gives you, like, a fucking nickel for the latest Call of Duty. Yeah. Because that's just how we are, right? It's like, oh, well, it's used. No one will want it. But then it's also at the same time we peddle used games and try to get you to buy a goddamn. It's basically no one, no one will want it, but we'll slap a sticker on it that 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 says forty bucks. It's fine. Exactly. We slap a sticker on it that's forty bucks, and then we tell you to fucking buy Game Informer so you can get fucking five dollars off that <laughs> shit. It's stupid. It's stupid. But either way, like, so that bullshit. And like, he came in, and there was just some like he turned in like fifty games, ended up being like two hundred dollars worth of fucking games. And then he got cash, and then he dipped. And then the whole store would just look like fucking ass. It looked like somebody just, like, threw up video games everywhere. Like, it was so fucking bad. And it's like, as cl it's like when you're closing, you gotta clean up to make sure the ha make sure the store doesn't look like shit. But, like, that day, I was just like, yo, dog, like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fucking clean this shit without being, like, over on hours, and then that's the whole thing. Either way, working at GameStop fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, I've, I've also, like, not, not to quit video games, but just because life I was shitty at the time. I've I've had to trade in like a fuck ton of games um for cash. Like I think like two suitcases full. Um for anyone that needs to trade in a lot of games, uh, because they have to like scan them individually, they have to test if they work. Um if you trade in hardware, they have to like test if everything works. Uh here's a pro tip that will make all employees' life easier. Call the store and be like, hey, I, I wanna you know, come trade in like 90 games. I know that takes a while. What's the best time for you guys for me to come in? And that way, everybody's happy, and yeah, you'll honestly probably maybe even get like some sort of deal out of it because you were very considerate of the employees at the time. They'll be like, "Oh shit, that was super nice. I'll throw in like a little something, something if 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 I can, you know." Not a GameStop because we're a goddamn corporation. I would have people come in and they'd be like, you know, we had our DS section, and they didn't have like actual cases or whatever. And then so the DS section, someone would be like, oh, well, it doesn't have a case. So you'll give me two dollars off. Right. And I'm like, no, like, I literally can't like. But also, all right, this, is, this might be sound like privileged or elitist, but somebody who's very fucking poor, if you need to haggle for two dollars, don't buy fucking video games. Like, clearly, you, you should have better priorities if two dollars is make or break for you. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bro, I, I felt really bad because his dad was like trying to get his fucking kids cooking mama. And I was like, dude, I get it. 
but also I can't like I can't haggle with you. This is not like a swap meet. This isn't a market. Like you have to fucking pay this retail price plus tax, dude. Like I and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't do a kickback. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's missing a case, like I can't fucking do anything like that for you. And it was just like it was fucking brutal. And then there were times where people would fucking bring in their PS2s and they're from like a disgusting household. And then like you'd open it up and there'd be like fucking cockroach eggs in it. There was one kid that like fucking put peanut butter in his PS2. <laughs> he put peanut butter in his PS2. And I'm like, why the fuck is there? Like I freaked out because it was warm and disgusting and it was oozing out of the fucking tray. He put it right in the disc tray. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I guess he wanted to play peanut butter, dude. Dude, I was just like, and then I was just like, um, I'm sorry, I can't take this. There's peanut butter in the disc tray. And then his mom was just like, why is there peanut butter in the disc tray? And then like, like a fucking like low key serial killer, he just like says in a dead flat voice, "It told me it was hungry." Bro, <laughs> all right, fucking call security, dude. <laughs> dude, I dead ass was just like, all right, well, uh, I can't take this, and uh, you want to leave the store? <laughs> Can you leave, dude? That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> it told me it was hungry, dude. He oh my was god, like, he looked like a fucking children of the corn motherfucker too. Like dead ass, he looked like fucking children of the corn, and he was just like the ps2 told me it was hungry and i was just like what the fuck <laughs> what in the make fuck <laughs> i don't get paid enough for this shit literally i was just like we out peace like looking looking around to see if there's like some sort of camera like <laughs> fucked up yeah look, luckily the mom like felt the you know extreme embarrassment and decided to very kindly leave herself so and take her child and her peanut butter ps2 with them so yeah, no, I've I've definitely uh, heard the horror stories of like cockroach uh, infested PS2s or like Xbox. And it's like, dude, how bad does your house have to get for cockroaches and stuff to like get in there? You know what I mean? It's like, bro, come on. Fuck me up, dude. You would like open them up and then there'd just be fucking like just cockroach shells in it. Yeah, no, it's 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 fucking terrifying. But yeah, um, on a on a on a better and lighter and less creepy fucking note, Monster Hunter. <laughs> oh, I was actually gonna say fucking it takes two. Oh, because uh, because well, we can go in on that for the most part, right? Like we don't have that much to talk about Monster Hunter. Like, it will be speculation. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, because we haven't really gotten like I've played it a little bit. I've done one star quests and some stuff I already like. Like I like that you can skip cutscenes and optional quests. Uh, you now accept at like the, the quest giver. I like how uh, blazing fast loading times are. Like I, I like a lot of the little quality of life things. Um, how cute the fucking canteens, yeah, canteen fucking uh, scene is. Fucking uh, the, the dango scene is great, you know. But that's really all I can say. So because I, I have to I have to play more. Same. So <laughs> let's just hold off that for like a whole ass podcast and just um, soon 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 oh uh, again follow that shit if you want to hear that um <laughs> come come back for a real review of monster hunter rise this was just a teaser basically but now we're going to talk about it takes two because we actually did play that and it's a fucking amazing it's it's very cute um so i already cute. had high expe- expectations for it mm-hmm. but uh because in the sense of i knew it was going to be like funny and it was gonna like it was gonna look snappy but it's just, uh, it still surprised me in, like, um, a couple of ways. Yeah, like, the textures in that game is so good, and, like, the load times are amusing, and the characters are really cute, but it's by the, the same studio that did um, A Way Out, and I absolutely loved A Way Out. Yeah. I played that recently with um, Terrible Hime on Twitch, and um, so then when uh they announced i think we saw it for like the game awards right i think like they were doing the game awards is when they teased it yeah i was watching it and they teased they just showed a trailer and i immediately messaged you like hey yeah there's this game we need to play when it comes out and then we put it in the back burner because it was it came out a day before monster like all right well we'll play it at some point (laughs) and then we kind of got fucked like all right let's play it anyway kind of situation so it, it all kind of worked out um it's so good but yeah it's, it's, it's about the same studio that did a way out and a tale of two brothers um i haven't played either of those i've only seen parts of a way out when you played it but if you enjoyed those um or if you enjoy co-op games in general uh definitely give it give it a look because you only need one copy mm-hmm. to play with two friends mm-hmm. 
or not to play with a friend sorry um so if you have a specific friend of mine just go um 50 50 it's 40 bucks so like 20 bucks each which um i think the game is probably i don't know like six hours long um we haven't finished it yet as of time of recording but that would be my like estimate we played for like three and a half hours at this point i think like six hours is yeah solid um but probably accurate like around there could be longer i don't know everybody online was saying that it could be 12 but also i'm just like yo really like 12 like come on i can't imagine it being like nine more hours honestly it felt kind of wild for that estimate too but it's super cute um every new level kind of has like a change dynamic which is super cute like you start off with like one kind of weapon where you're like using a hammer and nails and then the next and like the next one you're using like a rubber band as like a sling to like you like rope and like swing to other things and then um what was the next one? Oh, the the gravity boots and the being able to shrink and like and bigen and then small in yourself and so it's like really cute like puzzle low key based like dynamics and stuff like that like yeah. definitely would be totally suitable to play with like a younger audience members they might not get the mature themes of you know like uh, divorce and stuff like that but um the main dude that's like the the book of love that just like constantly gyrates like dr hakeem like book or he's like constantly just like pelvic thrusting at you and like dancing and speaks in like a very heavy like spanish accent like i don't know i fucking love it and um it was really fun because in our uh i streamed it and in the stream i asked chat you know who should be who and everybody voted that <laughs> milan should be the wife and i should be the husband it went beyond they didn't even Set, give it to a vote people just immediately just hit the override channel redemption they're like no yeah, this is this like is the it. fucking prophecy has foretold this 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 is set in stone like the fucking tablets have, have inscribed upon this for centuries he is yeah. the wife <laughs> <You> <laughs> at, the, at the same time though it's like the wife is such a fucking badass and like honestly oh no she's great she's so fucking cool and like honestly between the two of us you're obviously the more god gamer than me because i like fucking die like at least twice every boss battle <laughs> um so you're clearly the more god gamer than me so it was like more suiting for you to be the badass wife anime and anyways and me to be like the low-key kind of uh a dumb husband so the oaf basically <laughs> he's kind of like a lovable oaf uh not not like too oafy but you know like clumsy she's like an engineer so she like very strong flex and also like just the way that they run like she's always really precise and like does like martial arts moves and like meanwhile he fucking like reverse naruto runs like an idiot basically he like i don't know like, it's, i don't know how he does it like that but it's just like it's 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 super cute it's very well detailed it's basically a puzzle platformer game with like mm -hmm some action segments and they honestly go through like a couple of variety of, of game modes but puzzle uh platform at its core and the story is basically um you your husband and wife and you're you're gonna get divorced because nothing is working anymore and then your kid gets sad and cries over some homemade dolls that she made and then uh that are you yeah like of like you their, their visual representation of you yeah and and then that somehow like fucking hexes you and your soul, your consciousness, whatever gets transferred to to the little dolls, and you have to find in this in in this case, we're finding our way back to the daughter, so she can cry on us again. That'll hopefully undo it, but we don't know how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume it's going to end in a happy ending because every level, uh, even though the book is trying to teach you collaboration. Um, <laughs> It's not really doing it very well, but every game mechanic, because like you said, like every level gives you something uh, like, for example, the hammer and nails, like you had the nails, I had the hammer and we, you have to work together to solve the puzzles, mm -hmm. help each other out. So it's, it, if not like it's, it's, it's on the nose, obviously from a gaming perspective, but it's, it's also subtle that it's not um, telling you over and over that like, Hey, we're doing this so you can work together. And eventually you'll realize like, Oh, we make a pretty good team you know like that kind yeah. of story and like over time every time they're they're like definitely showing you some like character growth because at the beginning they're literally they they're like literally fighting about everything and then like kind of like the last level that we were playing like our characters were actually giving each other compliments yeah like i would yeah i would look at this gonna sound bad i would love it if at the end it just doesn't work out they still get divorced at the same time, you and I are hardcore misery porn people, so I would actually love that ending as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not even for for the sake of misery, but just I don't think it's a bad message to to, to convey that no, sometimes no matter what you do, 
some relationships just don't work out and that's okay yeah you know i mean it's more it's more realistic but let's be let's be honest they're probably going to do the fairy tale ending which is fine at the same time but i mean i don't know because i don't know how a way out ended and i don't know how tale of two brothers ended if they were both sad endings then they're probably gonna go three for three you know what i mean <laughs> bruh a way out was a sad ending for sure <laughs> yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if it was just a case of like i imagine it'll just be maybe something like where they still get divorced but they they remain friends right like because they they went to an adventure and they realized it's not as bad as we thought but maybe we just don't love each other anymore and that's okay you know that happens sometimes yeah i mean yeah that definitely does happen like irl and shit so it would be a more realistic ending imo especially with like divorce rates are on the rise and a lot of people just aren't getting married which is fine too because settling down it's yeah just hard school but at the same time this game's kind of got it all it's super cute it's fun it's co-op i fucking love co-op yeah. and um on top of that i mean she like fuck it she fucking hexes you so it's got witchcraft <laughs> so 10 out of 10 gameplay for me yeah like the, my only real complaint about it so far and it works out perfectly for stream. Like I mentioned this to you off the podcast. Um, so the game is, is quite literally vertical split screen. Like you, you can both see each other's screen at the same time. I think for like a true co-op experience, it would have worked better if we only saw our own screen, mm -hmm. which happens sometimes. Like sometimes we only get our own section mm -hmm. um, or like a shared screen. Uh, but I think the game would have been a better experience for the player if, if, they, if you could only see your own screen and that way you had... Because sometimes... Uh, there's a puzzle that yeah you can just solve under normal game. circumstances yeah under normal circumstances i'd like direct you with like the boat for example uh instead of telling you like hey go left and go right and you have to deal with like the inverse controls to just glance at my screen and make adjustments and i don't have to say a word well to be fair i realized you could spin the, hel the whole camera and then that was fine and i just did that for the last part and that's why we never crashed pretty much towards the end yeah but it's also like there were definitely some, like with the nails like, I would just go, like, hey, you have to put the nail there, and I'm looking at it on my screen, and you just glance over, and then... Yeah. I don't have to describe it to you. But for, for stream's sake, it's definitely good that they see both perspectives. Yeah. Like, it was it was super cute. I had, like, a ton of fun playing it. Can't, can't wait to play more. Probably will play more on Monday. Yeah. But, um, yeah. 10 out of 10. The voice acting, also super good. Yeah. It, it feels not realistic conversation, because um, it definitely feels very, like televised like like a movie conversation like yeah uh, too like too many jokes i think and like a lot of it is it's great but uh all things considered yeah no I, it's the voice acting is great it's a lot better than i expected um and it feels very believable that they're husband and wife for sure like especially the way that they like bicker over things and stuff like that is definitely like relationship energy <laughs> yeah so so that's that's uh very well done on the writing. The only the only really fake character is the daughter. Yeah, how like the daughter, like, okay, if I'm standing in a room and I'm talking to my dad and his back is to me and he's not responding, I would go in and I would circle around and try to make eye contact. Like, I wouldn't just stand in the doorway like, uh, dad, uh. I guess you're busy. <laughs> I, I know it's too busy, but. It's like, I would not fucking do that. Like, I would eventually just go around and, like, just be like, yo, dad, like, I need your fucking attention. Yeah. Like, dead ass. Like she, <laughs> she, she definitely feels, I don't know, she, she just feels like she has no, she's not a character. She's just a 2D cutout that's, that's there to make the audience feel sad slash make the plot happen. Um, but the book makes the plot happen because he's a dick, but he, he, <laughs> he, he feels believable, you know, so. And he's a fucking talking book. And he feels more believable than the daughter. <laughs> you know, like, the daughter just doesn't feel... I don't know, like, that's not how any human being behaves, basically. And even including children. Children are fucking weird, but she's, like, I don't know, 10 years old or something, 8, 7. Like, she's definitely old enough to behave more normally than, than what she does. So, I don't know. Yeah. She's the only one that feels out of place. Yeah, Moon Baboon seems more real. Yeah. Deadass. You know, for sure, so soldier fucking squirrel feels more <laughs> more real yeah and but other than that you know and those are minor complaints like oh i wish it wasn't fully split, split screen and i wish the daughter that has been on screen for two minutes so far was was a better character like that's very very little nitpicky for for a game like that um so tldr great game um if any of that sounds appealing to you um 
normally I would say, you know, go go check out Kelly's stream, but by the time this airs, we will all finish the game. Uh, just get it. Let's get it. If you, if you want, like, a cute little co-op game, and, like, you know, the difficulty curve is not that bad so you could easily play with somebody that was younger yeah you know like a kid or you know like a like a like a like a like an offspring yeah they basically you could definitely play with an offspring for the most part as long as one person stays because when you die you get to respawn and you you have to like mash a button to make it happen quicker as long as the other person is alive you, you can respawn infinitely mm -hmm. you, you only go game over if if you both die during that period or during some sections, um, like there's this one um, vehicle section. That's to, to not spoil it specifically. <laughs> where yeah, shit. <laughs> I mean, there's more than one, but like if 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 you crash into a wall, you just reset. Um, during those times, if you're, if you're playing with like a small child who really can't, because 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 you don't get to pick who drives. Worst case, you exit out and you like switch characters or something, but. Those are very small sections. Otherwise, you can you can for the most part carry the game if need be. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I will say in this case, I am the small child that's bad at things, and Milan is the, which is why which is why he's the wife who is very capable and smart and talks with a very cute accent, and why I am the dumb fucking husband <laughs> because all I do is constantly fuck up. Yeah, like I mean, you don't constantly <laughs> fuck up, but it's like there's definitely moments where you die early. Uh, and I ace the section, and then just spend like two minutes gyrating wh wh while you while you have to arrive. Yeah, he just literally waits for me at the end and tea bags, and then <laughs> I just eventually get there. But it's because like I just I I see that there's a like a quick time event, and I'm just like, oh, uh, nah, <laughs> yeah, you just like nah. I just go like nah, and then I'm like not today, oh. <laughs> and then I pog and I realize I missed it. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's great, and but it also creates for some great moments where you have to flip a switch to help me get get across, and then you kind of just don't, and I just end up in a fucking I get I end up in a blender, dude, and I just get blended. Yeah, and then it was so funny though because every single time like Milan would die, he'd be like, "This is why we're getting a divorce." <laughs> it's like as he's dying, it's like and it fucking sent me every time. Holy shit. Uh, that really sent me the the last death. So minor spoilers, uh, I guess, skip ahead a minute or two. Um, later on in the game, there's like a space section, and I have to hang upside down as the wife this item that she has to like carry so I don't like float off into space. But <laughs> she put it down, and that just broke my rope, and I just... Die! I just floated into, into outer space and died. It's like, all right, then that's cool. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> just murder your wife? Because I didn't know it would do that, but also it was very fucking funny. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious, but like, just those, those moments just keep happening, and that's great. Yeah, I had so much fun that somebody actually was just like came into my chat and was just like, "Oh, like, have you been drinking? You seem really giggly tonight." I'm like, "No, I'm just literally high on life right now." <laughs> This is the power of friendship. Yeah, it just made me super giggly. I, either yeah. way, the game is so good. Please get it. <laughs> yeah, and it's also obviously at this point their studio uh, exclusively making co-op games. This is this is the third game they made, another co-op game, um, and you can definitely tell like it's definitely something they're good at, and they're gonna keep improving. So um, they're not a small studio anymore. You know, they're not an indie studio. But yeah, if if, if you enjoy co-op games. Would definitely recommend uh especially for the price since you can just share with a friend and also it's it's, it's a very roundabout way so the, to to play the game if you don't own the game you have to download <laughs> you have to download the, the friend pass on steam which is like which is still the entire game by the way it's still like 43 gigs but you only get and i, I guess to mention it you can play the first chapter for free you just have to download the friend pass and you can play with a friend for free if you want to test out the game um so i have to download the guest pass thing, and then I have to launch it through Steam, which then launches Origin, which you then have to link to your Steam account, and that then launches the video game, <laughs> and then I have to get invited by Kelly to be able to join. It's, it's such a mess, and I don't know why. It's probably like EA being like, no, no you got to push Origin, even though I just wish it would die. I hate Origin. Lamau. Um, yeah, but in your case, right, because you own the game, mm -hmm. You can play with anybody. They just have to do that annoying step that I did. They just have to get the friend pass. So I would I would almost argue it's almost better than getting like a second copy of the game, right? Because you, you can literally play with anybody you want. 
Yeah. So again, if if that sounds good to you, get the game. Um, it's very cute so far. Uh, I don't think my opinion is gonna like change, but by by next episode, you know, by next week, I don't think I'm it, it, like whatever ending it is, happy or unhappy. I don't think it's gonna ruin the experience. Like I don't think the game is is gonna just like throw a curveball and that it's gonna change so drastically that the gameplay turns out bad or something. You know same exactly like i think at this point it's like our minds are kind of made up that it's a cute game you should get it and if you really enjoy co-op and fucking around and uh low-key griefing your friend and accidentally sending them to outer space so that they die <laughs> uh you should get it <laughs> but also isn't isn't just griefing each other just part of marriage really you know i mean yeah at least it should be if it's not part of your marriage i mean good for you <laughs> i mean good for you i don't know it's just like it's always weird uh to me like it's not inherently a weird thing when like people when when couples say oh we never fight like that's that that's too sterile for me dude like don't don't fight fight like don't don't like fucking mortal combat each other like through the fucking coffee table right not with that attitude but arguments are healthy yeah and it's okay to disagree with people i mean like yeah uh, i don't know just handle your words handle yourself but also at the same time we are not a fucking like marriage counseling podcast do not fucking listen to us for <laughs> some fucking reason like yeah uh no you know to, like to, to be clear i'm single as fuck don't don't just, listen to me <laughs> don't don't listen to us i'm fucking terrible too so just don't just don't just don't screw. yeah or do it's, it's your choice just uh, don't hold us responsible you know <laughs> yeah don't don't you know comment i don't want to see any comments below saying you know you ruined my marriage but also if you do want to comment below leave us some sugar yeah i mean yeah like basically if you're like hey you ruined, i listened to you guys and you ruined, you ruined my marriage like dude you fucking listen to like a podcast where you talk shit we have shitty hot takes and we we fucking talked about gamestop like half an hour ago like bro like come on man like like i, I think if your marriage got ruined because you listened to us, I, I think your marriage was already going to go downhill, my dude. I don't think we did anything. <laughs> but uh, while you're down there, please go ahead and sign this clause saying that you tuned into the podcast. <laughs> Let us... Uh... And you're not going to hold us responsible for ruining anything in your life. Thanks for coming to our TED Talk. Let us know in, in the comments below if we if we ruined your marriage. <laughs> you know, let, let us know. <laughs> I'm genuinely interested. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, no, TLDR, very cute game, would recommend, um, glad, glad we're playing it. Me too. It's been a good-ass fucking time, Scoob. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's rare these days, right? I mean, obviously, um, with the internet, like, a lot of games, you can play with, with a lot more people, you know, uh, but it's, 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 I would say it's, it's pretty rare to get, like, a genuine, like, two-player co-op game, um, yeah. to play, and then it's, it's also definitely in our case like a case of finding the time uh and like when to play because of stream and time zones and it's just like sometimes it's definitely uh a ha like you and i i don't think we could like commit to, like i mean we did and that turned out really well uh commit to like a 60 hour rpg <laughs> and, and finish it in a timely manner <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I'm still really sad about that. Would love to revisit TBH, um, but I think it'll have to. Pro it'll have to. It'll have to probably wait until after like I'm out of school, so then my weekends are actually truly my weekends again. Yeah. Um. But yeah, would still love to get back into quote unquote divinity with you 110. percent Oh yeah, I, I, that's that's the very reason why I stream Pokemon on Sunday. I'm leaving Saturday open for for divinity. Yeah. Because so, one day it's gonna come back, you know. It's going to come back. I really want it to come back. I fucking love Divinity. Divinity is so good. And I honestly want to like, because like you're very like puzzle and like, um, you know, I don't know. Think outside the box. Kind of like, kind of. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I would. I would say that about you. But like you're slowly like piecing it together kind of thing. And it's like, I don't know. I just want to see how you would handle certain things that I know that are kind of coming in the game. So that's why I'm just going like completely hands off and letting you make the decisions. Yeah. Because I don't want to, like, tell you how to live your life. But, like, there's a lot of things that can change. And I'm also just interested in, like, what kind of ending we get. Because, you know, we went a different way. Because I've I've, I've played it only once before. Mm -hmm. And I know there are many, many deviating paths that you can get down on, specifically in Divinity. So, and also, I'm going to fuck Ippin, dude. <laughs> Bro, don't, don't talk to me about names. It's been, so, I, I guess for, for transparency, like, how long has it been since we played? Six months? When was the last time? Like, September, October? It was September. So, like, a long time ago. 
and we that's, played okay. one time okay. for like six hours. That's fine, but uh, you you are using oh, what's her name? See, I forget her name. I forget the elf's name because I never use her. Yeah, the, the the fucking hot elf assassin. Yeah, hot elf assassin. Who tried to kill me? I think it begins with an S. It's like Celine or something like that. I don't think it's Celine. Alexandra? No. I don't know. Either way, there's that one, but I never use her because I don't need her. I typically play like a rogue somewhat character or somebody else does in my party, so I never need her. Mm -hmm. Um, but then there's Losa, there's the Red Prince, there's Ifin, there's Beast, who is the little uh the dwarf, um, changeling guy. I didn't know it was changeling. <gasps> no. <laughs> Spoiled fog. <laughs> Game ruined, can't play it anymore. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Fuck me up. But yeah, no. But basically that a game like that, because of stream and time zones, uh even on Saturdays, right? Because um we don't have all the time in the world, especially you know, with podcasts and just everything else going on. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a lot harder to commit to than like a game that's like max like ten hours long. That's like two, three streams tops. That's easy to like get to, but TLDR, it's it's super rare these days for co-op games like that to exist. Um, while also being fairly priced and good and just, yeah. Yeah, completely fairly priced, especially because you don't need a second copy for the other person to play with you. So you literally can just split one copy. So what, you both pay 23, 24 bucks? Yeah, exactly, right? So Super affordable. It's great. In my opinion. I agree. It was, it was a great fucking game. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait for more. Kind of reminds me of like Little Big Planet, and I was obsessed with Little Big Planet. I really liked a little bit, so I only played the first one, uh, but when it came out, like, when I got it, at least, I don't know if, I don't think I was hype enough to get it at release date. Uh, so back in, in Yi Day, uh, like, over a decade ago, like, when I was uh, a young lad, because I moved out so early, um, out, of, out of the house, like, I had my, my privacy super early, what I would often do is uh, we would have, like, what we call the, like, game camp, where people would just come over to my place for three to seven days. People would bring. Damn, that's a long time. Yeah, like just a week of just hanging out, and 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 it worked because you know I had an entire apartment, so people had their privacy, and we would typically like set up different rooms, like hey, like like let's set up these consoles and these TVs in this room. Let's let's do this over there, so we weren't just all stuck on like one couch with like six of us, right? And one time we were gonna do it like Loki for like a weekend, like I think the four or five of us total, and I think four. And it's like yeah, let me just get Little Big Planet. And let people bring their controllers, and we just played like I think like eight hours straight or something the the that night, and uh, it was very fun, fun time. Yeah, I love Little Big Planet, and um, I love co op games too, like like Overcooked. Like I'm obsessed with Overcooked. Um, so yeah, like um, I just have really fond memories of playing Little Big Planet specifically because it's like I played with my eldest sister and um her husband, and it was like the first game that he got for his PS. Three. Mm -hmm. First game that he got for his PS3, and then he's like, "Oh, it's co-op, so we can all play." And like, yeah, the three of us just fucking mashed on that shit because we were like, "Oh my god, it's so much fun!" And then like, <laughs> and it was like right after they had moved out, and they were like in their apartment and stuff like that. I, dude, I fucking miss like your game camp sounds fucking sick. It kind of kind of reminds me of like a land party. Yeah, like there was one time I went to a land party. And everybody else was playing like I think they were playing like Dota or something, and I was there with Sammy. And Sammy was like, I don't want to play Dota. Dota. Sorry, Dota. <laughs> I don't want to play Dota. And I was like, I don't either. And then she was just like, oh, well, uh, I have Resident Evil 5. Like, want to play? Like, I just got it. Like, you want to play it? And so the two of us just fucking hella co-op Resident Evil 5. And it was like hype as shit. Because I remember like playing oh co-op and 5 was sick. <laughs> All right. Here's, speak of Resident Evil 5. Uh -oh. Here's probably the best co-op experience I've ever had. And it's not technically made that way. Resident Evil 4. Okay. Yes, four for the Wii. Here's how you call up that shit. So how, because cause the Wii has, has a nunchuck and the Wii mote, right? Yeah. You give one of those to your friend. <laughs> that's that's how Paul and I beat the entire game start to finish. Like, that's hype as shit. He, he wanted the nunchuck. And if I remember correctly, what the nunchuck does is movement, obviously, but it also has the aim trigger. So like he has to like he has to hold down to pull out the gun, and then I have to like do the Wii mode aiming and shit. Yeah, uh, I will say it's very hard to like suplex a zombie, so like forget about melee and shit. So if anything, it makes it a little bit harder because yeah. you're using more bullets. You have to be conservative, mm -hmm. um, and it causes like a lot of uh, tense moments where you're just running and you want to aim, and then 
you, you don't coordinate, so you just like whip out your gun and suddenly you're looking at the sky because one one person wasn't ready for that aim moment. <laughs> but it was so much fun. Like I think uh, we beat it like over the course of a weekend, um, and it was one of the best experiences I had. Even though, even though how we decided to do it, uh, I I think his girlfriend was like, "Why don't you guys co-op it? Like fuck it, just do it." And then we did it, and it was honestly one of the, one of the best times I've I've I probably ever had co-oping a game because we just made it work when it's not intended for it. Yeah, no, that sounds super fun. But also, shout out to fucking Shin, God Gamer. She's a real one. Yeah, between your. LOL Resident Evil 4 co-op and apparently very dank pasta salad you're making a name for yourself <laughs> <laughs> this is true this is true but yeah but Resident Evil 5 was also a lot of fun co-op don't, don't get me wrong it's just Resident Evil 4 holds a special place in my heart because of that experience yeah I get it yeah I did not play Resident Evil 4 on um on the Wii I think I played it for the GameCube but yeah most people did and that's why I bought it for the Wii because I never got to play it for the GameCube hmm. So it was just kind of like, and I think it probably just arrived while they were there. I was like, fuck it. Let's just, let's just do it like this. Like, rather than me playing it the entire weekend while you guys watch situation, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's fucking great. And it, yeah, and just turned out to be a brilliant idea. <laughs> so so I guess if you're listening to the podcast, you want to fucking co-op Resident Evil 4, now you know how. Get a Wiimote. Yeah, if, if you still have a Wii, you know, or you go to get a Wiimote and then do the whole thing to like link it to, uh, to your PC and, and emulate it. Uh, I don't know if it, if it's out for the Switch. If it's out for the Switch, I imagine it's as easy to call for the Switch as well uh, with, with the Joy Cons. But definitely, uh, definitely recommend. Or I guess you could, you know, just do some games where even on the computer, where one one person is in control of the mouse, the other person is in control of the keyboard. Just, uh, just, just split up the controls. Just be creative and uh, don't take it too seriously because you're 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 probably gonna die <laughs> a lot more. Then, uh, then you should purely because it's hard to coordinate on the fly sometimes with a second person. At the same time, I would, t- I totally would play that, play that style with you. Oh yeah, it's 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 amazing fun. All right, well, I think that's gonna wrap up this week. Um, we hit a lot of fucking just basically gaming topics, but you know what? Uh, real poppin' gamers, real focus on their poppin' <laughs> games. So, <laughs> all according to Keikaku. Um, since you're here, if you enjoyed this podcast you should you know take the time to go ahead and give that shit a little likey poo little likey hit that little thumbs up or give it a thumbs down if we ruined your fucking marriage i don't know (laughs) um but also while you're down there there's like that little bell you could subscribe and subscribing on youtube is for free so you're literally not spending any money if anything you're just getting some dank ass notifications for when we fucking post one of these shitty fucking hot takes and also another way to ruin your marriage uh, so <laughs> you should definitely, uh, yeah, do that. And that way we can get that dank vanity URL because we want that mommy milkers, I guess. Mommy milkers rise up. Mommy milkers. Um, so yeah, I am one of your co-hosts, Kelly <laughs> Fart Dab, signing off. And this is my esteemed co-host. Utter host, Malad. You're not going to do the fart dab? No. Yeah, fuck. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for us. So see you in episode 27, who uh, we might have a special guest. Ooh, I'm Brad Rago. Ooh. Yeah, so definitely stay tuned for that. And, uh, yeah, just be here next week. Don't forget to suck a dick for fun. Bye. Bye.